everybody, welcome back to Game Informer. I'm Dan Tech. I'm here with Alex Stadnick, and we are privileged today to be talking with Gavin Moore, the creative director on the upcoming Demon Souls remake. Hi there, how are you? I'm great. So uh, I've got tons of questions about this game. Let's just dive right in. First off, how long have you been working on this game? <laughs> Three years. Yeah, so um, we've been thinking about doing this game for a very long time. Uh, it's a, one of the most beloved games in the PlayStation catalog, and it's also, you know, beloved by fans, and it's the most requested remake in, in our catalog. So, you know, we've been thinking about doing it for years, but we never thought we could do it justice. And it wasn't until we kind of refined what a remake should be with Shadow of the Colossus on the PlayStation 4 that we felt that we could take on the challenge of Demon Souls and, and, and actually do it justice. So... Yeah, we started uh, making the game immediately after, you know, releasing Shadow of the Colossus on the PlayStation 4, so three years now. Can you can you take us through that start? We were given the uh, blessing of the original creators from software to go ahead and, you know, make a remake of such a beloved title. And um, they, they haven't been involved in the production of the game. That's all been handled by Worldwide Studios and Bluepoint Games. We're obviously staying true to the original vision. I mean, that's incredibly important. So, so, so how true how true are we talking here? Is it is it is it one to one? And I know in the video that we saw of the, the the armor spider looked, as far as my memory it serves me, uh, it's almost a one to one recreation of that battle. Yeah. So what we actually do is we get the uh, original version running on the PlayStation Five. So it's called a legacy version, and so that uses all the uh, same collision, same you know. Um, background objects, models, animation, character models, weapons, everything running. And then what we do is we identify, you know, when we're doing a remake, we identify what the core is of the game, what is the most important to that game. And for us, you know, Demon Souls, that has to be the gameplay and the logic and the AI. So then we pair everything away, leaving that core there that we don't want to touch, right? That's that's the heart and soul of the game. And then we start building everything up around the game. So all new models, all new character designs, or, you know, taking everything back to the drawing board and building it back up. Animation, for instance, we went back to the motion capture studio and recaptured all the player animations again, which was the most foolhardy thing or decision that we made on the game because we have to match the cadence of the original. We can't change the walk speed. We can't change the run. We can't change any of the attacks. But we wanted to make sure that we improved upon the quality and, and brought the quality up to the level of, of a game that you know modern gamers expect these days on a AAA title. So let me ask you this. What, did you make any changes like, to anything that, uh, of those legacy things that may have not been you know, perfect? I mean, the game came out 11 years ago. And, you know, a lot has changed in 11 years in gaming and people's views of what a game is or what a game should be and how they play games has changed. So we've made a lot of what we call live improvements. You know, for instance, we've changed the camera. The camera is much more like a modern day camera than, than the original on the PlayStation 3. Now, when we make these changes, they're not done easily. There's a lot of discussion. We're big fans of this title. We're big fans of all the games that we remake. And so we're our own worst critics. So we you know, make these changes, we implement them, and then we discuss them and see how they you know, impact the, the core of the game. If they add to the game, then we leave them in. If they detract from that core, we take them out. And with the camera, for example, we're always giving options. So if you want to play with the old camera, it's in the options. You can switch the camera around and play with the old camera if you wish. How about uh, difficulty options? Were those ever there considered? There are no difficulty options in Demon Souls, and there shouldn't be. You know, I think that the original challenge is fair. It's all about learning, you know, enemy patterns and learning your environment, and then knowing when to move forward in combat with that risk reward system, when to attack and when to back off. And a lot of people tell me, "Oh, Demon Souls is such a hard game." I actually don't believe it is uh as hard as people imagined it was right i think the difficulty levels of subsequent games in the genre have got harder right i will say with demon souls um because of the playstation 5 there are some things in there that might make it a little bit more accessible to people so we offer two modes for instance as a cinematic 4k 
natural 4K, native 4K at 30 frames a second, which is stunning. I mean, it's the most beautiful looking thing I've seen. Um, and then we offer a performance mode, right? Which is, you know, a dynamic 4K at 60 frames a second. So that's 60 frames a second, that's smoother animations. It gives you a little bit more reaction time. So it can actually make a big difference between the way you used to play the game on the PlayStation 3 um, at 30 and now on the PlayStation 5 at 60. So were there any balance considerations or balance passes done on any of the any items or, or weapons or anything? Like specifically getting into some of the stuff that was really so, sort of abrasive in multiplayer, like uh, the scraping spear to shatter people's armor, you know, as a, grief, a griefing <laughs> tactic, essentially, which I knew was a big favorite originally. That's that was a major discussion about what we were going to do, like health systems with multiplayer, you know, how we were going to change the way you could invade somebody's game. Would you know if you've just been fighting a boss and they've used up all their grass, right? They have no healing, and then you suddenly get invaded. You know, it feels unfair, but it also it's a two way road, so you can do it yourself to somebody else if you wish. It's it's totally up to your choice how you want to play the game. So we didn't try to mess around too much with the way that that multiplayer system worked. What we did though is. You know, obviously kept the asynchronous multiplayer, which is the world tendency and the blood messages, which are amazing at that time when that came out. And then, you know, the, the syn synchronized multiplayer, we've actually brought that up to, you know, games in the same genre. So now it's three invaders versus yourself and two allies, if you wish, so six players in total. So you do have a little bit more of a chance by calling in some allies, definitely. So with world tendency and character tendency remain virtually unchanged yep. from the original game? They remain unchanged. So if you're offline, you affect the tendency to either swing it to black or white. And um, hopefully everybody knows if you're in white tendency, then you know the game is a little bit easier, but the drops are not as good. And if you're in black, the game is harder, but you get better stuff dropped by your enemies. But if you're online, the tendency is controlled by the community. It's the metadata of the whole community and the way they're playing. So that swings the tendency. What we have done with the tendency, which I think is incredibly important, is you mentioned UI changes. So hopefully you'll know now which world tendency state you're in. Um, it's a little bit hard to understand before. And hopefully those changes, you know, you, you'll know how close to white you are or, you know, if you're veering towards black. So with the multiplayer considerations in mind, is, is the specifically the old monk fight is that going to be as it was with another player coming in to take over that encounter essentially it definitely is i think that's incredibly important that's uh one of the outstanding features of the original game i think to call in another player to play as a boss what a genius move that is um and the only difference i would say with that fight is the loading times because sure. of the playstation 5 so would you, are there virtually, from, from the, some of the clips we've seen, there's virtually no load times. Is that, yep. is that correct? That's wow. correct. So you can be in the Nexus, touch an arch stone, and suddenly you're on the bridge in Boletaria ready to start off on your adventure. And it really is that great. I mean, I think the Solid State Drive is a game changer for most games, right? Uh, not only because of the loading times, but also the amount of data you can stream into your game, you know, and how vivid and alive your game can be but for us you know for demon souls it's incredible because the original game's frustration i don't think comes from the challenge and i don't think comes from dying right it comes from the frustration of waiting for the game to load back in because you're so frustrated you died in the first place and then you have to sit there for two minutes and all you want to do is get your revenge and get your souls back and carry on with your adventure and now you die and the next thing you know, you're back in your adventure again and you can take your revenge, you know, and you can move on and become the Slayer of Demons. So it's a big game changer for Demon Souls. So how about like a, like a minor tweak to something like, uh, you know, in the original, if you take a swing at somebody in town, they'll basically aggro for you forever. Like if you just accidentally strike a shopkeeper, is that still <laughs> intact? <laughs> well, they will aggro for quite some time, but they will calm down. Okay. So, right. I, I suggest that you don't swing <laughs> well we yeah. all accidentally hit the wrong button sometimes oh yeah 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 around. and it's very easy you know you know some of those uh, some of those npcs you meet are incredibly annoying so you do want to swing you know but they're designed <laughs> to be that way right taking a look at demon souls 
was there there was an opportunity to give players the the sixth arc stone was that ever discussed as a possibility so it was discussed um and then we backed off and so now in the nexus there are five unbroken arc stones you know the same as the original and um there are no new new arch stones and there's no new worlds to explore and i think that's fair this stays true to the original vision and uh it wasn't our right to create that extra world you know so really really on and really early on in the discussion of the game there was some mention of something called a fractured mode Mm -hmm. can you tell us something about that yeah so that's uh called the fractured world and that's a mirror mode which is like oh it's a mirror of the maps okay whatever it's actually the most challenging experience i've ever had with a you know with demon souls so when you switch the world so it's left to right right to left and you think you should run down this corridor but it's actually on the other side or and the bosses you know the characters come from different directions the enemies that were there come from different directions it completely changes the the way you play the game it's almost playing it for the first time again wow and that's a that's a mode that you can select yes wow Okay. Yeah. So New Game Plus, are we going to be able to opt into it? Or is it like the original, once once you complete a thing, you're kind of there? There is New Game Plus. And, I, you know, things like Fractured World are all part of that. Um, you know, there's gallery unlocks that we got so much um, incredible concept art that we'd love to show off to everybody so they can see all the new, you know, the way that we created the new look on the PlayStation 5 for all the characters. You know how they keep their core look, but how detailed they've become. So, you know, we've added um, a photo mode into the game as well. So, you know, really looking forward to all the shots that people take and post out there. It's a really in-depth photo mode too. It's built on the back of the Shadow of Glosses photo mode. So, really want to, you know, you can record all those triumphs and tragedies right and send them to your friends and share them out there i will let you know though the photo mode does pause the game right so there's a pause there's a pause (laughs) but it's it's not a pause like you think it is so if you get invaded and you're online and you get invaded we take you out of photo mode so you can't you can't dodge that problem so what was the most challenging environment to sort of rebuild from scratch so i think that was there are two two Personally, for me, I'm sure everybody on the team's got the different different ideas. The first one was Boletaria itself, right? The the Palace of Boletaria. I mean, remo- you know, changing it from it's a, the way it was originally very square looking architecture to a much more gothic look was a big decision. Um, and it's just the way that we felt it needed to go. I'm not saying it's better than the original at all because I don't believe it is. It just felt natural to take it in that way. Um, the other one, I think, is Valley of Defilement, which is the darkest level of any game in history. And, uh, you know, I don't think you get darker than that game, you know, in that level. And it was very difficult to navigate that stage, not only because of the lack of light, but also because of the lack of the furniture. So you didn't know where you were, where you came from or where you were going. Um, so rebuilding that, and doing it in a way where you still had felt like it was a maze that you had to navigate through, but, you know, creating it so it really was the Valley of Defarment. We have water dripping down the walls and pouring through the, the cavernous ceiling and, you know, the, the, the incredible, it's incredible. There's insects and leeches and things everywhere as you the scurry away and, you know, the, the uh, you know, the depraved ones are wandering around, you know, with their amazing plague masks and everything. It really is stunning now. I want people to play that because it was the most difficult game level to play, sorry, on the PlayStation 3 because the frame rate. Right. But now it's it's great. It's incredible. Cool. And that, that was an area where, where one of the bosses, um, you know, Garl Vinland is sort of just a dude in armor. Does there, was there any, like, you know, it's, it's a very cool fight with a really, you know, sorrowful soundtrack is considering what's going on but like was there any consideration of making you know garl instead of like just looking like an invader like a real boss so to speak well that would that would also be going too far you can't change garl vinland i mean i could <laughs> i was no way i was going to give garl vinland like fangs and horns and you know, <laughs> tentacles right um 
you know, Dahl is, you know, the protector of Maiden Astray and he thinks he's doing the right thing. I'm a noob when it comes to Demon Souls. Is this a good jumping in point for me? I think it definitely is. I mean, one of the reasons we created this game is it is a PlayStation classic and, you know, it should be, you know, remade again for a whole new generation of, 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 of gamers. There are people who, who are gaming now who weren't alive when this, or, or weren't old enough, sorry, not alive, but weren't old enough to play this game when it came out, right? Couldn't pick up a controller properly. So, you know, and then there's obviously people um, such as yourself who've never experienced it. And I think you have to experience it because the reward, the satisfaction of succeeding in this game is so good. I mean, it feels so good. And you need the bragging rights. Yeah, you, know, you need to <laughs> say... Yeah. I beat Demon Souls, you know. I I did it. Yeah. Dan asked me if I do every day, and I I, I keep saying no. I can't. It's, <laughs> right. it's unfortunate. You would be missing out though if you didn't pick up the game and try it, because, you know, I think uh, it is a classic game, and it's not as hard as other games that came after it. Don't be afraid of it. Embrace the death. Right. It's it's fleeting now with the loading. You'll be straight back in the game, so don't worry about it. On that note, was there ever any discussion of, like, again, balancing magic? Because as it's widely known that magic is a crazy, crazy powerful in this game in comparison to yeah. the ones that came later. You know, there was, like, turning down magic. But, you know, if you picked a magic user at the beginning of the game, you were at a big disadvantage. You're much weaker than your, your armored, you know, compatriots, you know there's a big disadvantage to just playing with magic at the beginning of the game. So that's the, the, the reward for how strong the magic is by the end of it, I think. And magic feels so good in this version too. I mean, with the real-time lighting and effects and the real-time shadows and throwing fireballs down a corridor and watching the whole thing light up and setting things on fire and breaking things apart. And, you know, it's, it's really satisfying to use magic in the game so i asked you about environments earlier who was what, which was the coolest boss to recreate uh the coolest boss or the one that i prefer so oh, I how, a, about, how about both yeah okay. we like both yeah so i think uh i have a soft spot for vanguard right i mean he's a sure the, just a, such a great iconic character but really my favorite boss is penetrator and the oh. reason i yeah The reason I love Penetrator is I feel like it's a one-on-one skill fight. He's super fast. He has a ton of varied attacks. They can be deadly. And it's about how good you are, how quick your reactions are. So it's rolling out of the way, you know, blocking, you know, pulling back, waiting for him to finish his attack and moving in. And now, you know, the environment he's in is great. He's got all these statues in the environment. We're in the original, right? And we've added all these statues. And uh, they're all dynamic. So he can smash them apart and all the pieces of statue go flying across the arena. You know, and it's like you know, rolling away as the statue smashes. It's a great boss fight. It's really, really, really cool and classic. And he looks great. You know, he looks amazing in his silver armor with all those red tinges on it and stuff. And, you know, so he's, he, I think he's my favorite gameplay reasons and for looks. I think the armored spider, though, looks amazing. I think it looks just so good. And that fight is so cool now with the burning oil that he spits out that rushes towards you and catches fire. That's a replacement to an attack he had, which is kind of an exploding cloud attack. And this way, what it does, and that forced you back, but this way it forces you all the way back down the tunnel again, right? (laughs) Because, you know, if you stand in that fire, you're going to die. So it forces you to go all the way back to where you started and then fight all your way back down the tunnel again to get to him to start, you know, taking him down. So I think that's a really cool boss battle. I think it looks amazing. Um, it's in a confined space, so the lighting effects are really cool. You know, we've done this thing. That, you know, you get shot by webs. He fires out webs that cling to you, and they slow you down, and you have to kind of shake off the webbing before you can kind of move at any speed again. You know, you're rolling under that web and stuff, and you can actually see it all clinging to you because, you know, we can do all of that stuff now on the PlayStation 5. Was there ever any conversation about switching from the grass system to, like, an Estes flask system? There are. Or was it always That conversation grass? is never finished. We've, we, we've mastered up the game, and that conversation is still going on now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, 
Um, it's still the grass system, though. I don't think you can take that away. If we did that, can you imagine the outcry? I think, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we would never do that. It's still the grass system. You, you've touched on a couple of things on how the PlayStation 5 has really, like, you know, helped you guys build the game that the rebuild the game that you're wanting to. But I'm curious about one of the things that Sony's been been pushing in in this pre-release phase is the haptic feedback on the controller. And I would right. imagine for a for a game like Demon Souls where precision is so key, that'd be a hard thing to balance. So how deep have you gone into the controller? Like what can players expect when they actually have it in their hands when it comes to that feedback? That's a really great question because there's you know the with the, that new generation of the PlayStation 5 and all that power you have, everything there that's been added, we're kind of in a difficult situation, right, compared to most games. If you're making a new IP, you can add any feature you like using any of those new features on the PlayStation 5, and it won't be a problem. But doing a remake, we have to make sure that anything we add is a perfect fit with the original. And for us, using haptics for the combat actually was a perfect fit. Now that doesn't that sounds wrong somehow, right? But it actually is quite stunning because the way haptics works, it's it's like a triangle of of, of audio and visual and tactile working together, right? None of haptics doesn't work if you take one of those pieces away. So when you're holding your controller and you can actually feel and hear and see metal striking metal. Right, it's this incredible sense of wow, that's that's incredible. I'm really in this combat, so it makes the combat in Demon Souls grittier and darker without us actually having to change any of the gameplay. So, is it is there it's like specifically like I've heard we've heard examples of like pulling a bow back and like the right trigger like tightening. Do you like do you did you guys do some of that too, or is it just kind of in the rumble on how and how that meshes with the other yes. pillars. So there are okay. two awesome features on that controller. And uh, so there's the the haptics, which is the, you know, the the central, the tactile feedback through the, the haptics motors. And then there's the adaptive trigger, which is a force motor. So yeah, we do that. So when you pull the bow back, you can feel the resistance. And then when you loose, it clicks. You can feel it letting go. And that's cool as well. And that's another thing where we thought that you know, that was the best fit in Demon Souls with an adaptive trigger. You know, and the thing about haptics as well, I think that's really important to mention is that it's not only about the emotional feeling of the combat that's changed, right, and makes it gritty and darker. It's also how it makes the gameplay better somehow, right? It gives you that extra sensory feeling of, oh, I parried. Oh, I'm going, I can now go in for my repost. No, I, I blocked that attack. I felt it. I know he's going to back off, so I'm going to roll out the way and come from this. It gives you that extra tiny split second that you need. But the purists out there, of course, you can turn it off or you can adjust the strength of it. You know, we, we have all of those options. So don't be afraid, right? Try it out. It's one of those things I was surprised, right? I thought, oh, it's not going to work. It's not going to work with Demon Souls. And, and it's one of those things you you kind of don't notice it's there after time, right? But when you remove it, when you turn it off, you're, you're like, oh, no, something's missing. Something doesn't feel right anymore. So, you know, try it out. I really urge people to try it out. So if you, if you were going to do the six arc stone, what was going to be behind there? I know what's in there, but I'm not going to tell you because I think uh, that would be, well, that'd be too much. And it'll give it okay. You can't play it anyway. So. I think another thing that I'd like to mention is that we have an incredible character creator now. There was one that exists in the original. So we've added thousands upon thousands of permutations. So you can build your avatar any way you wish and play as whoever you want to be. So to everybody out there, please, you know, build the characters, get into photo mode, get some shots of your character and put them up there because we'd love to see what everybody creates. I have no doubt that that will definitely happen. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Oh, no, thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. Yeah, and we're looking forward to, to playing the game when it launches on the PS5. 